Hello, and welcome to a video lesson on triangles. Okay, so we've been learning about triangles and congruence, and now we're going to talk about angles and side length of triangles. So we have two learning targets today. One, we're going to prove theorems about angle measurements in triangles. So we're going to look about look at a little bit of proofs, and then we're going to apply the theorems to solve for angle measurements. So the architectural design of the Rock and Roll Hall of Flame in Cleveland, Ohio, includes triangles. It does if you haven't Google it. Some of the glass panels on the facade need to be replaced. To cut the glass correctly, angle measures of some triangles will need to be determined. Okay. Jason owns a glass company and he'll be cutting out glass for the repairs. One of the tools he will use to determine angle measurements of the triangle is the parallel postulate. Jason cannot remember the sum of the measures of an angle of a triangle. Darsh, Jason, how are you? Do you have a, how do you have a job at a glass company? But he's going to begin by drawing one of the triangles on the glass that he needs to replace. So here is my blue glass that needs to be replaced. So. If you would like to do this activity with me, you just need a sheet of paper and you draw your favorite triangle, okay? So you can trace the triangle on the paper or you just make your own, okay? So I have a triangle. Two, I'm going to tear off each corner, okay? So I'm going to rip off the top corner. I'm going to rip off the side corner. And I'm going to rip off the third corner. So I don't have a triangle anymore, okay? Now, if you put all of the corners together adjacent to each other, you put all the corners. What happens? You get a straight line. Y'all see that? Makes a straight line. And we know that lines are 180 degrees. How cool. I'm going to try it with another triangle real quick. Here's an obtuse triangle. Just to prove it again. Rip off the corner. Rip off the corner. This one's going to be hard. Rip off. The corner. And then I'm going to match them all up. Boom. 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 That's cool. Confetti. Okay. So if you rip off all the angles of a triangle, it makes a straight line. So we're going to write line and number three. I made a line. Okay. What appears to be true um, about the sum, so again, we know a line is 180 degrees. If I put all the angles together, aka added them up, I get a line, which is 180 degrees. So the triangle sum theorem is the sum of the measures of the angles of a triangle is 180 degrees. Okay? So if you add a triangle up, you will equal 180 degrees. Hopefully, you remember that from middle school. If not, you proved why. All right, so let's move on. You just made a conjecture about the sum of the measures of the angles of a triangle. That's a lot of ofs. But the conjecture is not proven. So we made a guess. We ripped up some triangles and say it looks like a line, but how do we know we're true? So we're going to prove the relationship to be absolutely certain that he is correct. So let's do that. When you are given a figure for a proof, you cannot change anything in the figure. But you can add a line to a figure to help you complete the proof. A line in this manner is called an auxiliary line. The proof of the sum, triangle sum theorem begins by drawing an auxiliary line D that intersects point A and is parallel to BC. Line D forms angles 4 and 5 and 6. So what that means is it saying I'm allowed to draw a line? So let me get my line ready. I'm allowed to draw a line from A to D so that it's parallel to B and C. They have the same slope and it creates the angles 4 and 1 and 5. Okay? Explain why you can draw a line. The reason I can draw a line is the parallel postulate states that a line can be drawn through point A that is parallel to BC, okay? And we'll talk about that parallel postulate in a second, okay? So I'm allowed to draw a line that is parallel to BC. All right, so let's talk about the parallel postulate. Connection to history. The parallel postulate states that through any point P that is not on line L, 
there is exactly one line that can be drawn that is parallel. The parallel postulate also states, is also known as a fifth postulate in Euclid's Elements. Great book, by the way. Kevin read it. For centuries, it was believed that the parallel postulate was not really a postulate, but a theorem, which needed to be proved using Luke, Luke, uh, Euclid's first four postulates. It did not seem to be obvious, as did the first four of Euclid's postulates. Many set out to prove it, but always were unsuccessful. Ultimately, non-Euclidean geometries were discovered in which the parallel postulate was shown to be false. Interesting. How interesting. All right, so let's talk about the triangle sum theorem and how we are allowed to prove it. Okay, so the theorem that we are figuring out, we already know it's kind of true because we made a guess about it with the triangles, but we're going to prove the sum of the angles of a triangle is 180 degrees. So given some triangle ABC, I'm trying to prove that 1 plus 2 plus 3 is going to give me 180 degrees. Okay. So let's do this proof together. So the first thing I was allowed to do, I'm allowed to draw a line through A and D. So go ahead and do that if you have not already. Okay. Draw point A so that AD is parallel to BC. The reason I'm allowed to do that is through any point on a line, there is exactly one parallel point, one parallel line to that given point. Okay. So it's just saying you're allowed to create parallel lines. Okay. Now it says... 5 plus 1 plus 4. So angle 5 and 1 and 4. They make up a vocab word. We kind of talked about putting all the angles together. Makes a linear pair. Okay. But that is going to be the angle addition postulate. So if I add one angle plus the other angle plus the other angle, I'm doing angle addition postulate. Back to module 1. Okay. Number 3 says if parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then alternate interior angles are congruent. So since I have a parallel line A and D, and I have a parallel line B and C, I now have alternate interior angles. So my alternate interior angles are 5 and 2, alternating on the inside. I know they're the same. My other alternate interior angles are 4 and 3. Okay, so I know angle 5 is congruent to angle 2, and I know angle 4 is congruent to angle 3, because those are alternate interior angles. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and make that mark. Okay. All right. Definition of congruent angles would be that they are equal. So if they know they're congruent, then I know they're equal. So I just said the measure of angle 5 equals the measure of angle 2, and therefore the measure of angle 4 equals the measure of angle 3. Okay. So you drop the congruent symbol and add your m's. Okay. And now I'm going to substitute. So I have this equation up here, equation up here, number two. And I know angle five is the same as angle two. So I'm going to put angle two right there in place of it. And then I know angle four is the same as angle three. So I'm going to say, hey, I'm going to put it in place of it. I'm going to substitute it. Okay. When I substitute that, I'm going to get the measure of angle one is just going to drop on down. Then I'm going to have the measure of angle two in place of five. And then I'm going to have the measure of angle 3 in place of 4. So that tells me that angle 1 plus angle 2 plus angle 3 equals 180, which is what I know. And so that is the proof of the triangle sum. And that's why we believe it's true. How cool. So cool. Probably not cool to you. Okay. All right. So let me know if you have any questions on that. You're not going to be quizzed on this. This is just an example of why we allow the triangle sum theorem to be true and why we're allowed to use it in geometry. Okay. All right. Let's take a look at one more proof and then we'll do some math. So it says an interior angle of a triangle is formed by two sides of the triangle. An exterior angle of a triangle is formed by one side of the triangle and an extension on the adjacent side. A remote interior angle of a triangle is an interior angle that is not adjacent to the given exterior angle. Okay, so that is a lot of vocabulary. You have an interior angle, you have an exterior angle, and you have a remote interior, which is not adjacent. Okay, so interior angle are the insides of your triangle. An exterior angle is an angle outside of the triangle, 
and then remote interior means far away, okay? So sometimes Jason will only know the measure of an exterior angle of a triangle on the facade. He needs to be able to determine the interior angles of the triangle if he knows an exterior angle. So if we know an outside angle, I can figure out the inside of the triangle, okay? So let's kind of do this together to help you learn some vocabulary. So label each of the angles of the triangle using one of the following terms. So is it an interior angle? Is it an exterior angle? Or is it a remote interior angle? Okay, so let's go over this. I'm going to start off with angle four. So angle four is on the outside, hence an exterior angle. Okay, so number four is an exterior angle. It's on the outside. So if you want to write the word exterior here or write it to the side, doesn't matter. Okay, my interior angles are on the inside, so it's either one or two or three. But there is something called a remote interior, which is not adjacent to the exterior. So, one and two are remote. They are so far away from this exterior angle. So they're called remote interior angles. Angle three is called an interior angle because it's adjacent to the exterior angle. It's close. Okay? So you'll always have two remote interiors, the ones furthest away you'll have an interior which is touching the exterior. Okay, so you'll need to know that if they want you to draw a triangle and they tell you where parts of it is, okay? All right, so use a protractor to measure angles one and two and four. You don't have a protractor, so I'm gonna tell you. I measured it, trust me. So angle one is 60 degrees. Ugh. Angle two is 40 degrees. And angle four is 100 degrees, okay? All right, so I'm going to write down my picture just to help us out. Okay, what do you notice about the exterior angle? Okay, so I want you to take a guess on number 12. What appears to be true about the measures of an exterior angle? There's some relationship that happens between those three numbers and see if you can figure it out. I'm going to press pause so you can think about it. Write something down. Hopefully you realized if you add these two inside angles, you total the outside angle. Okay, that's always going to be true. So the two remote interior angles added together will always equal the exterior angle. Okay, so that is known as the exterior angle theorem. I call it EAT. E A T. So the exterior angle theorem says the measure of the exterior angle, the outside, is equal to the sum of the measures of the two remote interior angles. Okay, so the two inside angles, remote, added, equal the outside. Okay, so put that in your own words. Here's the fancy definition of it. Okay, so we now know a triangle sum theorem, which says the interior angles of a triangle are 180. And then we now know an exterior angle theorem, which says the two remote interior angles equal the exterior angle. And that's it. So those are our two theorems that we're going to be working with today. Okay. But now we got to prove it because in geometry you prove things apparently. So <laughs> let's prove why that is true. Okay. So I have some triangle ABC. I'm trying to prove that one and two added up are going to equal my exterior angle and here is why it is true. All right, so I have some triangle ABC with an exterior angle of a four. They gave that to me, that is a given. Okay, number two, the triangle sum theorem. We kind of learned that. The triangle sum theorem would be this angle plus this angle plus this angle equals 180. So the measure of angle one plus the measure of angle two plus the measure of angle three equals 180 degrees, okay? So that's the triangle sum theorem. Next but not, last but not least, not last, um, three and four. If I go back to module one, I've proved that three and four make 180 degrees because they are a linear pair. So that's going to be called the linear pair theorem. So I know that angle three plus angle four is 180 because they're linear. Now, if I say I know the angle, measure of angle four is going to be 180 subtracted by the measure of angle three, they're basically solving for the measure of angle four here, so they subtracted three from both sides. So that's the subtraction property of equality. 
I'll kind of show y'all what that means in terms of this. They subtracted the measure of angle three, subtracted the measure of angle three, cancels, leaving you with the measure of angle four equals 180 minus the measure of angle three. Okay. Next on my list, uh, they substituted. Did they substitute? They did substitute. What did they substitute? Ah, they said that I know all of this is 180. So if I see the number 180, I can replace it with the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 plus the measure of angle 3. So what they did was right here, they knew it was 180, so they substituted the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 plus the measure of angle 3 into that 180 part. Okay, and then they dropped down the minus 3, dropped down the minus 4. So that is what they substituted. And last but not least, a positive angle 3 and a minus an angle 3, they're going to cancel each other out, leaving you with the measure of angle 4 is equal to the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 because they simplified. And that is the exterior angle theorem. The two inside angles added are going to equal the outside. And that's why it exists, and that's why we use it in geometry. So cool. Okay. All right. So we've now proved two things in geometry. We've proved the triangle sum theorem, why the interior angles of a triangle equal 80. And then we've proved the exterior angle theorem, which is the two remote interior angles equal the exterior angle. Okay. So now, since we've proved them, we can now apply them to some algebra problems. So. Thank you for watching part one of this video on proving, and we're going to move on to solving.